want to give another shout out to uh, first. Uh, I want to uh, thank um, some of you may know Bitcoin Bell, right? Uh, I don't know where she is, right? She probably stepped out. So Michelle Seven, uh, she was very instrumental in helping put a lot of this stuff together and bringing some great people to the event. So uh, in a little while, we'll grab it. There she is. Let's give uh, Michelle a big, uh, a big round of applause and thank her for helping put this together. So come on, you deserve it. Give her a big hand. Come on up here so people can see you. Well, I... I <laughs> yeah, you are getting called to principal's office. I've known Michelle for a very brief time, only through social media, and she only offended me about 98 times. So, and we, we, we still talk, so yeah. she has a way of kicking up dirt. And uh, so if you want entertainment, follow her on Twitter as Bitcoin Bell. And uh, we just want to thank you for- really very sweet. I'm Michelle Seven. Bitcoin Bell is a disaster. She has no filter whatsoever. <laughs> it is very, um, yeah, she's a shit disturber, but um, that's, I'm <laughs> I'm not her exactly, just sometimes. Right. So I did um, I did bring someone special for you guys who if you he came in earlier, but um, my first Bitcoin conference was a couple years ago and um, I learned about Bitcoin in two thousand eleven. But I went to my first conference down in Miami and I was really surprised because I was thinking that I'd see just a bunch of guys and t-shirts. I thought I'd see all y'all. <laughs> and what instead I saw were naked dancing girls. And that was kind of yeah. weird. <laughs> I know that's exciting. But um, I brought Nick Sabo, because I think that's a much better person to bring um, for you guys. And so he's going to come and, and speak in a little bit and um, tell you about his startup, I think, that he's started and, and everything. And um, he was in here just a little bit ago. And feels really well, like likes this environment. And I was really happy to hear that there are are no lawyers. I'm about to tweet that. So thank you. Thanks, Stephen. Thank you. You bet. So we'll have you up in a little while. So, all right. So let's all come to the stage, Mr. Uh, Anthem Hayek Blanchard. So what a name, right? So uh, I want to brag a little bit about uh, Anthem. He comes from a long bloodline of strong uh, free market, uh, uh, honest, funny, um, uh, you know, upbringing. I mean. First name named after an Ayn An Rand book, right? And we read Anthem? Come on, raise your hand, show yourselves. Okay, all right. Uh, middle name named after uh, Austrian economist Friedrich Hayek. And of course, Blanchard, great bloodline. So I know he gets tired of hearing that kind of introduction because he does great things himself, right? And so he's uh, been instrumental in bringing, continuing that tradition of bringing honest, sound money to the market. And uh, he runs a company called Anthem Gold. They just recently purchased Amaji Metals. So helping them out and uh, to continue to bring the crypto to gold uh, market. So let's give a big hand for Anthem Blanchard. Thank you. And uh, also up, we're going to bring up Mr. Matt Bitcoins himself, Mr. Thomas Hunt. And uh, I wish you would have brought your hat with you today. Yeah. Yeah. So let's give them a big hand. So. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to turn the mics over to them. What we're going to do in this segment is just going to have an open discussion. Uh, they've prepared some <laughs> things to talk about, and we'll probably go about 20 minutes. And then we'll jump into our next session. So let's just turn it right over. All right, great. Thank you, Stephen. Thanks for having us. So, um, just some basic questions here. We're just going to talk to Anthem about his new project. So, Anthem, what are you guys doing now at Anthem Gold? Yeah, so Anthem Vault, Anthem Gold, uh, it's uh, actually Hyatt Gold uh, is our uh, gold-backed Bitcoin, or uh, it's uh, actually a gold token that runs along the Bitcoin rails through Counterparty. So um, it was, uh, I think, the, the first um, you know, major uh, gold-backed Bitcoin. Um, you know, they're obviously really supportive. I see Bell Gold here, you know, really supportive of what they're doing, you know, just supportive of the greater community. Uh, so you know, basically our, our mantra is to try to make uh, assets uh, as accessible to the world as possible um, and the safest, secure, most valuable assets accessible to the world. So uh, our view at Anthem Vault is that the best way to do this is through crypto. So uh, obviously you don't have to repeat all of the benefits, you guys know all the benefits. So what I try to do, I'm not a PhD computer scientist, I, I, wish, I wish I was. Um, I wish I had that mental capacity. I'm not a PhD physicist. Um, I am a businessman. Um, I, my, my goal is to try to translate um, to user experience for our user base 
um, the benefits that uh, this earlier speakers and I'm sure the future speakers that I'm looking forward to hearing today and tomorrow uh, espouse. So. so if someone was to buy these gold back tickets, would it be like Bitcoin where the price is constantly going up and down? Well, it, a Hayek is a gram of gold redeemable in an Anthem Vault account. So uh, the, the unit sta stays uh, constant to the price of gold to that extent. So uh, we're using Bitcoin blockchain as rails as a vehicle of transmission for people. So is it mainly for storing value or is it, could you also spend value with this system? It, it's both. So it makes gold spendable. It, it's storable. We, we have a fractional metal ownership platform, allows clients to buy, sell uh, any little parts as small as a 10 billionth of an ounce is, is you know, 10 zeros to the right of the decimal. Um, so the idea of having you know, crypto uh, rails, this gold token that runs along Bitcoin is the idea that you can spend it if you ever need it to. Um, and you guys are doing that on Counterparty? Yeah, yeah, we decided to choose Counterparty. Um, you know, we had some good conversations like really early on, actually at uh, Shanghai last year, I was speaking with Paul Snow about Factum, I'm really impressed with what, the, what those guys are doing. Um, actually, Paul recommended to me, I was like, oh, should we go with Factum? He was a really straight up guy, I thought, and said, no, go with Counterparty, because they're further along. And that, that influenced me quite a bit. Um, and, you know, we were already looking at Counterparty. I think it made a lot of sense because it was already pretty well developed. So that's what we've chosen um, as an initial platform. Yeah. So how would your product compare with other products like BitReserve? I know BitReserve recently changed their name and they're leaving Bitcoin. Uh, is your company going to do the same thing or should we prepare for a repeat? We're, we're going the opposite way. So we have uh, at least a dozen at this point different product development ideas and concepts, ways to use Bitcoin blockchain, other blockchains, to provide services that we think people will use, basically provide traditional uh, financial service type products. I mean, I'm starting to see other startups just embrace this idea too, like Notary is one that I've seen recently. That's something that we've had in the works for a while. Um, so we look at crypto as an innovation. And, you know, Obviously, from a practical standpoint, um, all the information is secured all the way through the point of sale, which is a huge, huge leap. Um, that's something really important, and all you need ultimately is internet access, right? Because an email address, basically you can have a wallet, a crypto wallet. So for the developing world, that's something that we're really excited about. We've had some preliminary conversations like BitStay, BitPesa. Um, yeah, really, really cool, harnessing the open platform of, of Bitcoin from a regulatory standpoint. And it has all the advantages of gold where you're holding a stable currency, but you don't have to carry all that weight around, right? You could just put your gold on your phone, move to another country, take your gold off your phone, something like that? And to, yeah, so to answer your question more specifically, you know, in regards to some of the other services that have integrated with Bitcoin, um, really for us, we're looking at Bitcoin as not just the store of value like some of these other services are, but actually as a vehicle in and of itself of transmission, to, to be able to transmit gold along the Bitcoin blockchain as opposed to just going back and forth and speculating from you know one store of value to another store of value. Now, if I wanted to withdraw actual physical gold from Anthem Vault, could I do that? Yeah, we, we do have that request. Uh, so we, yep, it, it's, a, it's a kilo of gold. It's a you know, kilo, thousand grams, do the math, right? So that's an easy one. So it's about $35,000 worth of gold. Um, you know, practically speaking, you know, being able to spend Hayek, I mean, that's something that we're working on right now. We actually, we, um, we launched Hyatt Gold in May. Um, we um, got hit up with a FinCEN ruling in August that basically said that any gold token along a decentralized network would be considered an administrator, which is a money service business. So sorry to snooze everyone with regulatory talk, but basically meant that you know, we had to become a money service business. So that's the process that we're going through right now. Um, and uh, we're based here in Nevada, which is fortunate. Nevada is a great jurisdiction for anyone out there that's looking to do something and they're gonna get installed in an MSB issue. Uh, it's about $250 a year uh, for the surety bond. So it's, it's one of the more forgiving states. So. Now, we talked a little bit about this earlier. Your family has an impressive background in gold. Could you say just a little bit about what your father was up to in the uh, 70s? He was a fearless individual, uh, is the best way to describe him. Um, near fatal car accident um, as a teenager, uh, had a, a few vertebrae shattered, paraplegic, um, literally almost died. Uh, so his history teacher became really enamored with the idea of sound money and 
gold and silver and what it represents individual sovereignty and protection of your purchasing power and value. So um, when silver went out of the coinage, um, went out of uh, some you know, dimes and quarters in the 60s, 63, 64, um, you know, he basically realized, well, this is wrong, I and mean, this is wrong. It's like the last vestiges of sound money, um, practically speaking, are going away, and he became um, really interested in the subject matter. And then 1971 came around, and President Nixon um, said, you know, other central banks were no longer uh, allowed to redeem uh, $35 for an ounce of gold, and that was basically put my dad over the top. So what he did was he he smuggled, he bought a gold, a bar of gold from uh, Canada. Uh, as Trace uh, alluded to earlier, it was uh, prohibited for U.S. citizens to actually own gold bullion from 1933 through 1974. Um, and so, uh, pretty insane um, that uh, this is even the case, right? It's this benign metal, and so. And most people don't even know about that. That FDR actually seized all of the Americans' gold during World War II to put more money in the treasury. Yeah, yeah. It was this Keynesian thought, right? If the government could control money, then they could make the economy magically better, and skittles and rainbows and unicorns <laughs> appear. So, obviously, that proved to be a huge fallacy. Um, but unfortunately, you know, this uh, this is. Um, you know, disallowing prohibition of gold still continued even after 1971. So, Dad smuggled bar gold from Canada and paraded around Washington D.C. Continued to call pressers, press conferences, and you know, no one showed up. No one showed up. And then all of a sudden, the three main networks showed up, and the three only networks at the time showed up and had a big presser. Ended up getting on the, the national news and. That supposedly was the catalyst that got Congress and President Ford to move to rescind uh, this Executive Order 6103, I believe. And um, then from that, uh, parents went on to create the largest gold coin company, the World Blanchard Company. So they sold that to GE in 89. And, uh, so that's the, a very, very, very proud lineage. I mean, I, I view my parents' role as making, helping to be a catalyst to make gold accessible to hundreds of millions of people in the US. And ultimately, our goal with Anthem Vault is to make gold and precious, most valuable stores of value uh, accessible to the world. It's like one thing that I'm particularly proud of is that you know, we enable someone from anywhere in the world to hold value in the same place, location, that Fed member banks literally hold their cash, and Fortune 100 companies literally hold their cash. So you can have someone in the middle of any developing country that actually has more utility um, with value and, and held in these same vaulted institutions, um, and it, it's, it's a pretty it's a it's a pretty neat cognitive dissonance thing when you really think about it. It is pretty amazing to imagine. A lot of people can't even have savings accounts, but Bitcoin gives them the ability to have a savings account with Bitcoin. And if they had your gold product, they could have a savings account with gold in it well, any, anywhere in the world. Yeah, any any counterparty enabled wallet. So um, you know that was one of the reasons that we chose counterparty initially, just because. Um, you know, they, they were one of the, the first layers out there that really made a lot of headway um, in terms of um, adopting other, other tokens. So. Now, uh, going back to selling physical gold, it sounds like you're doing something with uh, Magic Metals now. What's going on there? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm Magi was someone that they, they always really impressed me. Um, I, I, I you know, think that uh, this whole combination of digital and physical and gold and crypto, it's, it, it's I view it as a really important medium, gold, that is, uh, in metals, to have a peaceful transition to a crypto world. Um, gold is something that people already understand. All central banks hold it. Billions of people hold it. They understand it. Um, and the, the facts become where Bitcoin trades anywhere you know, 50 to $100 million a day, depending on the day on average. And, and volume gold, you're looking at 90 to $100 billion a day including derivatives, Forex, you're looking at upwards of six trillion a day. So gold, by injecting gold into Bitcoin, you're adding um, you know, several factors, you know, almost you know, 2,000 time factor of liquidity. So um, it, it's, it's, it's pretty significant. Um, I, I think that it's gonna help be a catalyst for more, more crypto adoption. So I think as opposed to thinking of it as an, as an either or, you know, either crypto or gold, I think of it as an and. And other crypto uh, you know, currencies as well, other than Bitcoin too. So now we have a really hard question because at one point I could buy an ounce of gold with a single Bitcoin. Will that happen again? It's a great question. Um, <laughs> yeah, 
and I think I got asked like, a similar question by the Canadian Times, and it was like when Bitcoin went all the way back down again to a couple hundred, and went all the way back up, and I, I think I did say I was expecting it to go down, and expecting higher highs, and, and I would say the same thing again, that did happen, and I would say the same thing now, um, you know, to, to the Canadian mail, I'd say to you, it's to be, um, I think I think it I think it's going to go lower and I think it's going to go a lot higher. Um, you know, I, I, I think we'll, we'll, we'll see very very higher. safe answer there. We'll lower <laughs> and higher. Write that one down. I would I, very economist. I would yeah you're right. That, that that's probably a problem of, of doing too much mainstream media right. You start like getting getting the effects of it. So uh, I would, but but I mean I I think it's going to take another leap in user experience. I think you know, some of the catalysts are going to be companies in this audience. And we need to make um, Bitcoin more user friendly. It was like, you know, Chris was talking a little bit about that prior. And it's true, it's true. It needs to get, it needs to get Apple, Apple and Google easy. Well, I think we're getting close. Uh, are there any questions in the audience? Uh, go ahead, do you want to shout it out or should I bring the mic over? I can shout. Right. It, um, I heard this, I don't know if it's true, but um, Supposedly, a, a large amount of the world's gold on paper doesn't actually exist. Could you address that? And also, could you address how you guys are, are doing your own proof of reserve and whether that's in real time or what you're doing to address such concerns? Yeah, good question. So the first question, yeah, or the, the $5 word that they use in finance is rehypothecation. Basically, it's yeah. just saying, taking one, you know, someone's gold and then basically selling it again and again and again, even though it's the same Thanks. gold. So, I mean, I can tell you that I, I just spoke with like a, a state representative, um, well, not just, it was a few weeks ago, but um, about, you know, visiting some, um, you know, some government um, locations and asking for an audit and not being given a proper audit of you know, any kind of allocated numbers. My experience with gold money, uh, I don't want to name any names on camera, but I can tell you some major, major bullion banks that you know basically stated um, that if they had gold in the vault, then they weren't doing their job. The banks are in the business of lending, ultimately. Um, to your second question about um, like proof of existence um, of the gold, it's it's a it's a tricky one. We are we're audited. Um, you know we have bar lists on the website. The hardest part about this industry is the vault operators themselves. When you're dealing with Loomis, Brinks, a hundred plus year old companies, and ultimately you're dealing with their insurers. Really, that that's the trickiest part, and that's even more difficult because you're dealing with Lloyd's, which is an insurance broker that's hundreds of years old, and they have these very stodgy restrictions now. Like anything, you can negotiate, and, and there's different leverage points, and, and there's all kinds of there's all kinds of applications that we're putting pressure on our vaulting partners um, to adopt um, that involve Internet of Things, involve blockchain, um, involve verification of bars. Um, I don't want to get too much into that, but but um, from a business development standpoint, but but. Um, there's a ton of disruptive innovation that needs to happen in the physical custodian vaulting industry. Um, so, yeah, for all budding entrepreneurs out there that want to have a go at that, that, that's a good one. So we're 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 constantly pushing the envelope. Um, I, I don't think it's going to get to where it needs to be until we have video and all yeah. kinds of other X-ray and there, there's a whole slew of verification. That, that needs to happen still. We're, we're, not, we're not anywhere near it yet, and we won't be really until we get the vault operators, major vault operators, um, on board, which we're close. We're, we're pretty close. So, so uh, do you have a direct relationship between the vault uh, and the gold to uh, Bitcoin? Do you have a published relationship between the gold and the Bitcoin? So in our in our case, it's just a hike is one gram of gold redeemable in an Anthem Vault account, and so and they're prepaid storage insurance up front, so it's a little bit like a front loaded mutual fund from that standpoint. Um, so that way, it's not like an ETF where you have to like do this mental calculation of oh I'm losing you know 40 basis points a year. It's like okay, as a unit of account that gets confusing. So a hike is always a gram of gold. Now in terms of how fast the Hayek transmits along the Bitcoin blockchain uh, before we uh, suspended the service um, in the second or third week of August. I think we were at about 12,000 Satoshi or somewhere around there roughly for the transaction and you know, it was constantly adjusting based on um, 
you know, what, what was going on in the network, basically, carrying times. So, uh, yeah, so really, the bit, no, sorry, sorry, Michael. Yeah, so the number, the number of Bitcoin, basically, it was just more of a function of how, how much utility um, is needed, basically, you know, to, to, to move the gold along the Bitcoin blockchain. I was just clarifying, first of all, that uh, BitReserve did not get rid of Bitcoin. They just changed the name to Uphold because it's easier to deal in certain jurisdictions. You don't have the word bit in your name, but uh, they, they have all their KYC license and everything. It's just that certain banks are bit who? No, whatever, you know. So with Uphold, it's like, ooh, it sounds good. So, but they have just as much Bitcoin as they ever did. Um, and USD and Euro and all that stuff. And actually, they do have gold on the radar, too. Um, question on uh, Hayek, because I know we had discussed this a year ago. Um, Will, are you able to sell until you get all your licenses? And if you do, will it then go on like coin market cap? Because I don't see it as a trading coin yet. Yeah, so great question. So right now, the clients can buy, sell uh, parts of a bar of bars, and we have 5,000 accounts. Um, so uh, really, you know, they, that functionality has always been there, will continue to be there, because that has, that's not a money service business. By definition, of the federal government is just buying and selling uh, precious metal. So, to, with the Hayek, once we get licensed up in Nevada and then FinCEN as a result of being licensed in Nevada, basically, um, that uh, basically at that point, yeah, someone, yeah, the token should be on coin market cap. Um, anyone basically then that's in the jurisdiction of Nevada or it could be an international jurisdiction where you know we're dealing with a company that's properly licensed as a money service business, money transmitter, then yeah, they will be able to basically be uh, have an account at Anthem Vault, and then they can then sell the tokens uh, as you know, as they see fit in their retail operations in that jurisdiction. Okay, so unlike say Shapeshift, where they exclude New York, you're only including Nevada and outside of the United States when that happens. Well, right, so technically, anyone that has a crypto wallet can hold the Hayek. I mean, where they are in the world, we don't know. But let's say someone that was in, that resided in New York, wanted to redeem Hayek's through Anthem Vault, they would not be allowed to do that because until we were properly registered in New York with bit license, presumably, if we ran into that with the administration. Will, 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 it, will, will, it, will it trade on an exchange, though, like a yeah. Polonix or something? Oh, oh, oh yes. And, and that will be anybody can, can buy it just like anything else. They don't oh. have to Oh yes, oh yes. That that that's the big. I mean, that that's the real big value add. And, and do you have a do you have an anticipated date for when that's going to be? Hopefully, in the next two months. I mean, it's as quickly as we can get. I mean, we've already made all the relationships. We already have the. We already have a high account. We have the centralized payment too. We we have all of that done. So now it's literally just a question of going through. I mean, um, we have like one other director that's filling out their form that we should make it. It's there tomorrow. Um, is, uh, yeah, it, it's supposedly be about six, eight weeks. And the, and the last question that I thought of when I gave the, <laughs> the phone back, or the mic back, was um, um, you bought a Magi, congratulations. Um, didn't they have a previous um, relationship with another Coinbase, was it, was it Sarika or? I, uh, they were doing a digital tangible, I think it was. Right, which is now called Sarika. Okay, Sarika, okay, okay, yeah. So they, they, yeah. Yeah, they had that program before we purchased uh, the prior ownership, I think it discontinued that relationship. Okay. I, I didn't get too much into why. I mean, it did be, because we were so heavily focused on Hayek development, um, just it, it didn't really fit exactly our strategic dev in present, but that said, I mean, I, 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 can, I can literally, we have like a dozen, a dozen or more applications on the books using crypto, so I could, you know, I, I don't rule anything out. So. I, I knew a number of people who bought gold through uh, Digital Tangible, and then I think they pivoted to marijuana, yeah. so yeah. <laughs> Interesting pivot. Yeah, I think it could be really interesting. Sarah Capay is doing kind of like a trees delivery 
the funding for marijuana companies, they do need a lot of, they don't, they're unbanked. So, uh, any other questions? Is there any intention of having uh, other metals? Yes. Yeah, I mean, there, there's 92 naturally occurring metals on the planet that we know of at least. Um, and I don't see why people couldn't hold a little bits of all of them. You might not be able to take uh, physical delivery of plutonium um, if you're speaking to your house, but you could maybe another vaulting facility, right? So um, I, I foresee with the extinguishing of national currencies, I mean, you have this kind of new problem too, like we were talking a little bit at lunch, kind of this idea of like if you have an environment where yield is more difficult to come by, then like as far as, you know, maybe you have other metals as stores of value that you have as equivalent savings accounts now, um, potentially, and with more innovation, as we found, like all, there's so many metals that we still don't really have a utility for, but as technology develops, we find new applications for metals that we never thought before we would even need them. So I think once we get rid of the monopoly of, of, of fiat currency and legal tender laws, once, once all of that inefficient capital goes away, then I think what you'll see is this rapid acceleration. I mean, you already see it with gold. I mean, gold is used even though it's very, only about 10% of it is used industrially, it does have some really high-tech applications like laser applications, aerospace, since it's the most malleable of all metals, right? You can make it thinner than any other metal and it'll keep its, um, keep its you know, hold. Um, so yeah, I, I think that that's gonna create increase the value of these scarce metals and, and ultimately, you know, be an alternative form of savings account. All right, any other questions? Or Stephen, Brent? Yeah, let's All right. Thank you, both. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you, Anne. Really appreciate you coming up here. So hopefully you'll stick around a little bit. People can uh, yeah. bend your ear out in the hall. So, um, I'd like to give a big uh, shout out to, uh, well, Again, our sponsors, uh, Velt Gold as well in the back room. So you can visit Joseph back, back there as well. You can trade your Bitcoins for gold or vice versa. Um, our media partners, we have uh, Bitcoinist, representatives from Bitcoinist here. So welcome you guys. And, and uh, also Why Bitcoin Magazine. They just uh, trucked in a whole bunch of their brand new, hot off the press, Why Bitcoin Magazines They're in the back of the room and out front. We got a bunch of them. Take a bunch home for your friends. Uh, those of you in the college students, take some back to your uh, uh, classmates. I think those would be great. Uh, it'd be great for a report back too. And there's a lot of info in there on A to Z, you know, the very basics of Bitcoin all the way up to some of the advanced stuff you've heard here today. So this next speaker is someone that I've had the honor of knowing several years now. Uh, I'm from San Diego and so is he. And uh, we started a meetup there years back and uh, you know, it was maybe two or three of us would show up at a local pizza joint and we were just excited about this crazy thing called Bitcoin. And uh, in, in those early days, I remember many times I'd sit there by myself. I'd do it like a church meeting, right? Once a week we were meeting to talk about Bitcoin. And uh, uh, sometimes people would show up. And one of those early times, one of those people was Mr. Paul Poy. And uh, we got to talking. And, and, and he, he obviously saw the opportunity and he went and started building something. And what amazes me is how he's been able to put together just a, a powerful, um, innovative and cutting edge team to develop probably one of the arguably the, one of the easiest Bitcoin wallets on the market now, but also have